All right, let's do this. What have we got here? Uh, oh, where's my chat? There it is. Hi, hey, Mr. G, Andy Magic Knight, Prince Phase, Colt, Amok, DMX, Steps, Doxter. Missing anybody? I think that's everyone. Oh, cheers, Wicked. How you going? Hi, guy. Well, I don't know what that was. Furai as well. Old school coder. Cassé pad the wire. Hey, guys. All right. Oh, Anthony Roberts as well. Hi. Okay, so what I wanted to do tonight was try and recreate um, or some way recreate this transition. So I just want to test a few things out tonight. I don't know if we'll get the whole thing working and it's just a proof of concept so it's going to exist outside of the game so it'll be a separate uh, file that I'll share with everybody. But I've got some ideas of, of how um, how this is going to work so uh, hopefully it all goes well. Let me know if the music is too loud and such as usual because uh, I cannot tell I just have it coming out of my speakers so I, so I know it's actually working. Um, Music is good. Alright, uh, cool. So, just thinking about how to do this. Um, I'll start with Sprite Pad actually. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do it in Sprite Pad, but I'm going to just demonstrate. So, first of all, I was thinking, okay, I could just have Sprite like that, and we just use this all over the screen using a kind of zoned multiplex. You can't really hear the music. Okay. Uh, I kind of like it so it's it's a little bit lower. I'll turn it up ever so slightly. It's a tiny bit louder. So, um, and then I thought, well, if I do it like this, I'm gonna have to change every sprite color on the fly. And then I thought, okay, well, what if I use a multicolor? Then I can just change one value, and all the sprite colors will change. So. I think that's how we're going to go about doing this with the multicolor instead. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the sprite in X and Y. So it's going to be a double size sprite, which means we'll be able to fill the entire width of the screen. Um, and by making them double height, that will be 42 pixels high. The screen is 200 high. So that means we'd only need five rows of those. So we're going to create, we'll start by creating the, the routine to fill the screen with those um, uh, using IRQ splits. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a, a kind of IRQ lookup table um, because we're going to interweave those IRQs with, with other changes as well. So we're going to change the colors on the fly because we can change the color of a sprite and we can change its X position and we can turn it on and off on the fly. So you can have a sprite that that is drawn, um, is half drawn and then is turned off. But that's that's fine for us to do. I think we can do that. I think we can turn them off. If not, we can always switch the pointers, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we can turn them off. Um, so this is going to be the experiment. Um, we'll start by filling the screen and then we'll, in the middle, in between those IRQs, we'll stick some color changes to make sure we can change the colors halfway halfway through a sprite which I, I know for a fact we can do um, and then we will work on changing the position of the so if you think of each um, each IRQ band if you like as a as a row of these eight sprites that cover the entire screen we're going to turn some of them off towards the end and move the last one in and out a little bit and that will give us fine control over the the width of the horizontal bar that appears on the screen which means we can use the v blank time at the bottom to kind of work out what these values are going to be um, so we can work out what the color values are going to be and we can work out what the the positions are going to be now the trick is going to be trying to do as little code as possible before the setup so i'm thinking something along these lines um, so every time a new color band comes in, it's going to be kind of grab, um, grab our bar color. Let's just call it that. And that's going to be stored in this sprite, which is sprite multi. I completely forgot what sprite multi color is now. It's D023, I think. Let's 
anything up my list. Hi Mike Zero team, welcome to the stream dude. This is a little bit different to normal because normally I have have a good idea where I'm going with this. Yeah, D D zero two five. So, uh, but tonight I'm kind of I'm playing off off the back of my head to be honest. Um, just some ideas I've had. I, I know roughly what my target is going to be. <laughs> shimmer, shimmer, bit of Kim Wild. Thank you for the uh, gifts of the MX and. Uh, Congratulations, Steps, on receiving that. Uh, hey, Hayes as well. Retro, oh God, you really do have an, like, a, an emoticon for everything. I think I need to lurk in a few more f few more channels to get these things, because that's cool. I like that. So, yeah, it's about making this, this bit as little as possible. So there's going to be the sprite enable, which is D015, I think. Uh... Yeah, D015, so enabled. And then that's so that's gonna give us sprite width control. So that's gonna give us up to 48 pixels of control plus color. So we additionally need um, to set the position of one sprite. So and this might be Uh, it depends on so this this value here is going to change depending on which sprite we need to load and then I realize what you also need to do is you need to reset the last one as well so you would have to grab this value sprite previous x so this is the total amount of code I think I need to run um, I think if I do the bar color first and the enabled first, then actually I can set these during during some of the transitions, during some of the time. So we'll see what happens when we get to it. For now, let's just set um, let's set a, a, a little program up to do the basics. So. I hope everybody's kind of following what my idea is. Maybe if I show you as well what I intended on doing. Um did show it on the last stream, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. So let me open up a copy of Chrome up. Are always delighted when you guys see a non Scott drinking iron brew. Are you Scottish then, Dave? I like Iron Brew. It reminds me of Vimto, but like a, a fruitier version of Vimto. Let's, let's do this one. Let's just turn the background noise off. I think it's about here. Why is it with these videos? I don't know why I have problems. It's just YouTube as well have an issue with. So if you watch this transition up here, which you can't see because it's been really laggy, but um, there you go. Pause. Oh, damn it, paused in the wrong position. Try again. Oh, you can kind of see it happening and then... No. Try it one more time. If not, I'll just show you this static picture that I grabbed. One. So you can kind of see it happening there. <laughs> Thanks for the bits. I was told I was giving too many bits. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Thank you, Emma. And step forward a frame. How do I pop? That's the last of mine for now, P. <laughs> Thanks, Steps, for the bits. I like the fact that it describes the Tom Gout emo as P. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, that's changing the speed. Ah, there we go. Right. 
So you see this transition as it happens. I don't know why, it's, it's really bad, I need to figure this out. No, this is chrome, this should be fine. Slow it right. You can see it's these bands of colour that go across. So what I want to do is use the, the sprite kind of field to adjust the, the sprites on this side. I'm not going to do the slant because that's a little bit too much. Um, I think we could possibly, possibly create the slant, but um, it, that would get a bit more complicated. I think for now this is fine. Um, horizontally. Also notice that there's an overlap between this one and the previous one. That won't be there as well. So there will it will just be stacked bars, basically stacked horizontal bars, but moved in at different speeds um, with alternating color ramps going through them as well. Um, so they'll come across. I probably use a similar color scheme to this actually. I think it's quite a nice color scheme. <coughs> um, and then at the end, they will fade into all, all the same colour. See how they fade into yellow, which creates the, the completely yellow background. Uh, then at that point, you can remove the sprite field, just set the background to yellow. Um, uh, and then use, use whatever text you want on the screen. And then likewise, when you're getting rid of it, you fade all your text off off the screen. And then you um, put the sprite field up, put your new scene behind that. Uh, and then do the, the, the opposite in the other way. Uh, Chrome DevTools are still way better. Yeah, they are so much better. Um, Firefox has got some nice um, some nice network tools, um, but it, but Chrome is just a lot better for kind of day to day um, day to day kind of debugging of, of web pages and JavaScript and stuff. One, two, Yeah, I, it probably is one of my extensions. I've got so many. <laughs> Thanks, Toxter. And thank you for the gift sub, Amok, and welcome to the subs, Hacksaw. That's your, you're all busy with your bits and your subs tonight. Thanks, guys. Oh god, what is this music? This is a bit intense. <coughs> okay, so this this is what we're going to kind of aim for. Something close to this anyway. So, start by setting up... Um, setting up our interrupts. Uh, I do like to turn everything up on the... on the... Uh, on the banking. I mean, it's kind of unnecessary for this, but I'm just anyway. I just I prefer to use direct kind of methods rather than the kernel methods for, for interrupts. Um, and then I think so. I'm gonna have, but this is our sprite split right here. Uh, we're going to have IRQ index. Uh, and then IRQ table. And this is going to contain all of our, um, our lookups for, for how this is going to run. So we'll start by just putting five splits in. Um, and then when these when these five are finished, so when the index gets to the end, it's going to reset this and go back. But this we can use. Um, so we're going to need a split index, which is going to count which split we're on, so we know which y position to put our sprites on. And then we'll add another index in here for the colors as well. Um, so now it's just a very simple routine. Here, I probably will make the macro for that in a minute, and, or maybe maybe I use the uh, the self mod approach to this it might be better. We're only gonna have two splits, two two separate IRQs anyway. Um, okay, so <clears throat> so we're gonna start with this IRQ here. It really doesn't matter where we start. The first frame is kind of a bust here anyway because it's gonna 
Actually, no, it's, it's not a bust. But it's... it's yeah. the, the thing is, you're always set up your... Um... Oh, hang on. IQ... Line table. You always set your lines up um, separately from uh, from this area here, so it's, it's a good idea to kind of just accept the fact that you're probably going to forget to set this value, the, the line value here properly, um, uh, and just accept that when your IRQ routines repeats itself, the second frame will always be exact because you're going to get the correct line numbers in there as well. Uh, what was the version of Windows which had the Wii's? Oh god, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. I think, I think it... I can't remember. I can't remember, but I, yeah, I do I do vaguely remember. It's, uh, it's so... We'll, we'll start the, the first, like, like I say, it really doesn't matter because it's going to get reset by this value here. Although, what we can do, just to make sure it's it's the same every time, let's just do this. And then whatever line I set here is going gonna, is gonna to trigger properly. Uh, I need to acknowledge that interrupt. Yeah. Oh, I've got here. Um, so I'm just going to do the usual implement the border colour here just to make sure that we're seeing something in the right place. Uh, I'm just wondering whether or not to include the lines in here as well. No, I'll keep them in a separate table, it's probably easier for look up. Uh, just need to be aware that I'm going to have to change these. So I'm going to go two lines before the edge of the screen and then for each one of these, this needs to be 42 pixels ahead of uh, 42 ahead of that. So that's going to be 2a onto each one, I think. Yeah, 5a. So this becomes 4. This becomes 2a. A. D. Oops. This becomes that's four to A. That's that's C no D makes Right, so these are our lines that we're gonna go through. <coughs> so for now let's just check the first split, let's just make sure that's actually working. Uh I'm not seeing anything. What have I done wrong? Oh, I need to enable the interrupts, that's why. Cool. So this is where our split is currently happening, and that's fine. So likewise, we need to create some sprite data. So at the moment, I'm not going to change the bank. I'm just going to leave the bank where it is. So I'm going to use the the last sprite in the bank. Kind of makes sense. So uh, so this would be three FC zero data. And this basically needs to be uh, a multicolor value, so something like that. Yeah, something like that's fine. Right. So that's the very, very basics of what we need to do. So to set the IRQ up. Uh, so I'm going to. Have a function called init sprites, and this is going to set all our sprite pointers up and, and positions. So we only need to set. Um... Oh shit, we're going to have to set the y position for eight. Okay. Let's think about this. Uh... <laughs> uh, oh god, it's 
warm in here. Has anybody else noticed how much warmer it's been the last couple of days? It's been insane. Hopefully that's... You can't hear that on the mic, hopefully. Seems to be quiet, it's good. Okay, cool. So, initialize sprites. So, first of all, let's start by enabling all the sprites. And we also need to set the uh, vertical and horizontal stretch for these as well. So it's D017 and D01D. So and then X positions. So we need a table of X positions because we're going to need these. Um, So when the sprites are, are fully covering the screen, these are going to be the positions that make up um, the, oh god, these are going to be, we've got the freaking MSB to deal with here as well. So if we're careful about this, if we align everything by the MSB on the end. Okay, let me think about this, right, so our screen. <clears throat> looks like this. <coughs> it starts at zero, then the border is at 24. And then we've got all this space all the way up to 25, let's call it 256. Um, it just makes the math a bit easier. And then we've got, uh, it's, it's, the screen is 320 wide, so if we we take 24, so 344 it would need to go to for the extra border here, and then whatever over here doesn't really matter. So if we were to line sprites up here, our sprites are going to be 48 wide, so if we add a sprite in here, we're going to go from 256 to plus 48, so that becomes 304. And then the next one would be 352. So that's fine. Now, can we fit six sprites this way? So six times 48 is 240, 288. Yes, we can very, very easily. That seems too easy. I think we can do it with seven. I don't think we need, I don't think we need, uh, I don't think we need six. Have you put a request in? Let's have a look. Okay. JCH Maniac Mansion. Okay. <clears throat> Let me grab that. Put the last two sprites here. Put them back into it. Uh, I think if I go 48 backwards for the load each time, so I think that's 48 is 240. Oh, okay, nice and simple. Sixty-four. 
Two thirds, two to twelve, six days to May. Cool, so these are our positions. Which means we only need to do seven sprites. Is that it? That was really short. I'll play it again, because that was very short. Yeah, let's play the original as well when that's done. Uh, who's the original by? Chris Grigg. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's see it. So we actually only need to use seven sprites. So. And the pointers will all be the same as well. I'm just going to do this by hand rather than individually. I might update my um, now playing actually to show the, the waveform as well because I know you can do it through this. There is a scope thing. Oh, actually, I don't want to click it in case it breaks the tune. Oh, I broke it. <laughs> It is a little bit flaky at times, that uh, that player. That's why I didn't want to click it, but apparently just hovering over it was enough. Okay, let's play the original one. Uh, wet mansion. And I probably broke the nail playing as well. Yeah, no. So I don't care too much about efficiency when it comes to uh, to this bit of the code because this is just a proof of concept. So. Although saying that, I'm going to create a loop for this anyway. Right, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll set the Y's up while we're here. So we'll start with the Y on at the top of the screen. Is this gonna work? Okay, let's get back to the list again. I can't remember what list I had on now. Uh... What's this one? If anybody's got any, uh, oh, Jason Page's recent SIDS. 
Legendary Sits of Legend. Okay, let's give that a try. Yeah, I like Jason Cage's stuff. Missing half my windows here. <clears throat> okay, cool. Uh, so the only other thing we need to do is set the the MSB and stuff. So the MSB is going to be just for the last two sprites. Uh, we're not using sprite seven, so it's just sprite six and sprite five. So that would be. Uh, let's see. Now the reason I positioned those. Uh, sprites like this is so that I don't have to if I move um, if I want if I want this to oh, actually no this isn't gonna work is it I might have to, I might have to rethink that a little bit but <clears throat> I'm trying to avoid changing d010 if I can help it so ideally I want it so when the last sprite's moving it never crosses that boundary but I think this is going to cross that boundary in fact it's immediately going to cross that boundary so maybe should have used more sprites and shuffled them over by 47 or so uh, I'll worry about that when we come to it let's just get the, the sprite field displaying first Okay, that's is displaying. So we need to set the colors. We need to turn multicolor mode on. So I think that's that. Is it D zero? Not D zero one A. That's the the raster. Uh, D zero. Oh, where is it? D zero one. That's it. And for now, we'll just hard code the color in. So we're, we'll just put yellow in for now, because that's kind of the effect we're going for. Cool. So we've got a band of yellow going up the screen. Now we're going to create one for the next raster. And it's going to be the job of the next raster to work out what the next line is going to be and what the next IRQ is going to be. So, what we need to do is grab the IRQ index. And we can make this dynamic as well so I don't have to recalculate this every time. So. Also needs to reset this split index as well. Actually work in there. So this is just going to make sure that when we get to the end of the IRQ list that we reset our split index because this is going to be used here, um, which is where we're going to do this. Uh, and then to grab May as well put the whole thing in here as well. So 
tail quality. Yeah. I wish you'd comment all that sprite setup code. <laughs> How many sprites is that yellow band? It is uh, seven. Um, all right, let me stick a few things in. So. That's vertical, just check. No, put it the wrong way around. Just for you. I'm not going to detail, I'm not going to comment how the loop is working. I think, I think you guys know how to do that by now. So this is going to set the set next IRQ line, and now we need to grab the next IRQ table. So for transfer X later, uh, actually, do you know what? Uh, actually, no, it's fine. I, I would probably recommend splitting this into two tables, but uh, of LSB and MSB something I've recommended before but for now this is this is fine this is just proof of concept stuff so that then it's obvious it's two part uh, cool, so this is now going to set the split up on this line, um, and if I just increase the border colour here again, you'll see we should get some splits down the screen. And you can see the splits are happening just before where the sprite should be. So, <clears throat> one of the cool things about sprites is if you set the Y position of a sprite anywhere within this sprite boundary here, let me just turn that off. It's if you set the Y position of any sprite within this boundary here, it's not affect, it doesn't affect that sprite as it's being drawn, but it does mean that the, as soon as the line gets to here, it will start drawing the next sprite perfectly. So as soon as it's finished drawing one, then the Y value kicks in and it will start drawing the next one. Um, so let's get the sprite Y values there. So our first row of sprites has been set um, here to three two. So I'm actually going to grab it from from this list, and I'm going to put that value in here. So three two. <coughs> our sprites are twenty one high, but we've doubled them in with, so they're now forty two. Um, so these need to be two a high as well. So they basically need to be these addresses plus two, these lines plus two. So. So now we've got the, the Y values for those rows. So what we can do is we can go I can't type up here. Uh, 
that should probably be uh, no, that's that's right. And then And we're gonna need our our stuff in here to store, so push the accumulator onto the stack, transfer X to the accumulator, push that onto the stack, transfer Y to the accumulator, push that onto the stack. And then at the end of here, the last thing I'm gonna do here is pull the accumulator, transfer to Y, to X. So as long as we call next raster, always at the end, uh, this should be fine, don't need to do it. <coughs> Um, and, uh, sprite values, yeah, and then store that as uh, its own. Increase Y, increase Y. Right, hopefully. <laughs> This should give us um, a screen full of yellow sprites now. Okay, we're missing. That's weird. We're missing two here for some reason. Okay. Let's try that in the debugger. Let's see what the hell's going on here. Maybe it's a timing thing. Maybe I need to bring the line back by one as well. Because it's showing them all the way down, but for some reason it's not displaying that. Yeah, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna pull the, the lines back by one. So if I just reduce these by one. Perfect. Yeah, it must have been on a bad line. Oh, cool. So we've got a full screen of yellow now, and this is all entirely sprites. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah, you can see there how it's working, and you can see as we move down the screen, as the raster goes down the screen, a new raster gets triggered, sets the Ys up for all of these, and that's pretty much all we need to do for the sprite IRQs. The fun bit comes when we start trying to change the colour in the middle of these. Um, <clears throat> so let's get rid of that. So this is the next split. So this is um, this is our, uh, what should we call this? Uh, let's call it animate, animate uh, sprite update IRQ. Uh, and it's going to have the same kind of beginning and end to it, so I'm just going to copy this and then chop out the bit I don't need, which is this bit here. Uh, <clears throat> hey, happy hippo, hippo, happy hippie hippo. Uh, why not high level language? Because there's no fun in that at all. Uh, Oh, now I need to see that. Let's have a look. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, this. This is this is an updated version now. So. Yeah, that's cool. Valid answer, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing is, as well, is um, I I work with high level languages day day to day, um, and you know it just makes things a bit too easy. This this for me is a way to get right down to the metal, and um, and now you know this and speed wise as well. You're never going to get close to the speed you can get with raw assembly, so. You'll do all right, but um, but raw assembly you can uh, stuff like this would be tricky to do with raw with um, with something like C or the high level languages. 
because we're, we're we're using kind of precise kind of timing raster timings actually not that precise but it would still be difficult <laughs> that's better Andy Okay, cool. So the sprite update IQ is basically going to change the colours. So let's start by just putting uh, two in here. Thank you for the follow, Orihara315. Welcome to the stream. So I'm going to put one in here for now. And I'm just going to put one halfway down the screen. It doesn't really matter exactly where. But we do need to make sure that these, so I'm going to label these with, um, I'm just going to put S next to these ones, so we know these are the sprite splits. <clears throat> just so I can get these, these positions right. And then I'm going to make sure these are kind of quite far away from the splits so that they don't interfere too much. Um, but I'm going to use just two splits so we can reset the colour and then set the colour to something different halfway down the screen. So. Do the search six zero for instance. So this is just going to split the screen into two halves. So you think, if you imagine, um, you imagine these uh, these as as the bands basically. So we've got two bands here at the moment. One that starts at twenty one to sixty. One that starts at sixty one is down the bottom of the screen. Um, we're, we're going to need um, uh, so split index is is the index for these things here so we need another it's kind of a split index though as well so I'm going to call it band index because that's what we're essentially doing the bands uh, so that needs to be reset at the end here as well so uh, yeah oops Then in here we can have band colours. Okay, so so I'm going to start by just using uh, yellow and I think that's orange. So the orange or brown, we can figure out what it is. So we're going to grab those from the band index. So in here, I lower it band index. Oops, cap sock is on. And remember what I said about not using sprite color, but using multicolor. Because it's a solid color, there's no need for us to not use multicolor mode. And by using multicolor mode, we can change one value in memory and it affect all the all the sprites on the screen. So um, these are two zeros. These are two five. Let's see. So that's. See, this is this is wrong because we set multicolor mode and let's show in the sprite. Oh, it's because of the stupid way that. Um, okay. So sprite multicolor is actually um, D zero two. I forgot what it was now. D zero two five. Yeah. But I bet when I run this, uh, uh, let me just let me just turn off this bit for now. I bet when I run this, the sprite colors are going to be whatever the original ones are. Yes, they are. So that's because that those bit as actually sprite color, not multicolor like you would expect. Try and change it around a bit. There we go. It's better. <clears throat> yeah, that's. It's always been something that's kind of found a bit misleading. I don't know, I don't know why it's like that, but it is. So 
So hopefully now this should split it into two halves. Yeah, uh, yellow and orange. Which it does. So the next thing to do, I'm going to put another split down here and then we're going to try and stabilize these so we don't see this because I don't want to see this at all on the screen. Uh, so I'm going to put the next split fairly close to the last one just to demonstrate that we can do it halfway through a, a sprite. Uh, so I'm going to do this one uh, at like 68 or something. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna indent these as well just so can, we can see them matching up uh, and then sprite color okay <clears throat> so we need to stabilize these um, I'm I'm thinking this is probably going to be around about the same place everything so I think it might because what I don't want to do is wait until let me put my borders on what I don't want to do is wait until the raster gets here so uh, because this is going to waste this bit of time here so this these I mean it's only about I don't know maybe eight cycles or so uh, on this side here um, but I don't want to waste those cycles I feel like they could be useful so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knot to the edge of here uh, and we'll adjust the knobs as we as we go through this just to make sure that this is happening at the right point also that doesn't look like orange it looks like brown but whatever so in this one here uh, I'm just going to put a couple of knobs in. So, uh, looking at that, we've got about 16 cycles to kill. Uh, so we can just do eight knobs. Should be enough. Which it is. Seems fine. I'm going to pull one knob out because the, the closer we can get it to that edge without the flicker, the better. Yeah, so it does need that last one. So I think I was spot on with my estimate. Um, <clears throat> I just want to check one thing because I do want this to be compatible with NTSC as well. So uh, there's no reason for this game not to be when it's ready. So um, I just want to make sure that this actually works on NTSC settings as well. No, it probably needs one more. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to waste one cycle. So, uh, if you do that, it basically has no effect other than setting some uh, values, uh, setting some flags. It doesn't affect the accumulator. Not that it matters here anyway. Uh, but this wastes three cycles, this wastes two. So, this just adds one extra cycle on the end if we replace one on up. There we go, perfect. <laughs> and now I should be able to dot these all over the screen and, and make random bands of different widths as well. Um, so if I was to put, uh, let's put another one in there. Uh, let's make this 75. Let's put a brown colour in. Let's put a yellow colour back in at the end here as well. Uh, but and as long as I dot these throughout, it should be fine. But the thing is, what this doesn't need to be dynamic. We're not going to be moving these bands up and down. We're only going to be moving them across the screen. So it's this sprite table, uh, this IRQ table, doesn't need to be dynamic. We don't need to change them. Um, if we wanted to, we could bounce the bounce the um, rasters within their zones, but there's no there's no need to uh, to actually do that. Not for the transition that we want to do. There you go, perfect. So we can create different coloured bands uh, very easily. So the next step is to see if we can actually move some of these um, these uh, positions uh, in a little bit. Uh, 
I think the biggest problem I'm going to have is with the, the X position. So I, I'm going to go and have a quick cigarette and I'm going to have a think about how to do that because I don't want to be messing with the uh, with the Sprite MSB if I can help it. And I don't think we need to if I'm careful about it. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to have a quick think on that while I have a, while I have a cigarette and I'll be right back. All right, be right back. All right, I'm back. So thinking about it, the real, really, really easy way to do this is to just shift everything to the left by one pixel. Um, so like this, I'll explain why in a second. Just type these values in. Uh, which does means we do need to change the MSB because only the last sprite has been used uh, in that area. So, and the reason for this is because basically to make this effect work, what I want to do is take some of these, uh, take these sprites, and either turn from starting from this end, either turn them off um, or move them to the left. Um, if I turn, if if I move this to the left, it's it's going to stay in there. This one I can move uh, quite a bit to the left. I can move this an entire width of the sprite to the left, and it will ne it will always stay in this area, so it's perfect. Bump the desk it's convert to four twenty. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could. Uh... Catch up with us. Ah, oh, Mark is doing. Oh, okay, cool. Converting basic games to ASM. Yeah, that's that's a good idea because there were some pretty decent games in the typing things. It's just they suffered from not having the power of ASM behind them, so they were a bit slow at times. But there's some good ideas in there. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can really flesh them out with nice graphics and stuff like that, and they, they look pretty good. Um, I've, so I've got this little screen on here. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it very well there, uh, but it plays videos of all random games from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and every now and again, I see a game that might well, be a really good game to convert to the C64. Very annoying. <laughs> I've, I've got enough on my plate. I've had to actually pause loads of stuff so that I can keep up. And I'm falling behind quite a bit, so. Um, uh, did, uh, I want to convert assembly games to basic. I'd like to see Luna done in basic. That would be a pretty impressive scroll routine if you could make that happen. Okay, so band colors is one. Uh, so we're also going to have uh, band. D015. So this is going to be our sprite named. So at the very, at the very basic level, um, all seven sprites would be on. So that would be like this. Um, so if we wanted to move one of the bands in, we would turn off one of the sprites. So if we turn off the last sprite here, uh, it comes this. And if I put this code in here as well, so... We should now see that one of the bands is... Did I do that right? And D015. Ah. ah, okay. So you can't turn off the sprite once it's drawing. Okay, so this is this is where it's gonna be a problem now. So what we can do instead shit, this is gonna be a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sprite here. Just 
to the 64, just make it nice and neat. Uh, and this sprite's going to be empty data. Which means we can't use the D015 trick here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this bright pointers on the fly. Um, okay. This is going to get a bit trickier now. So think about this. Damn, I was hoping we could turn off. I couldn't remember if you could actually disable a sprite once it started drawing, but apparently you can't. Um, yeah, I, I, you definitely can't because if I set that to zero, right, we should be seeing that. And we don't. If I run that in the debugger, you'll see. So, there, you see, the sprite is actually turned off, but it's still being drawn on the screen. And that's because once once the sprite's been started, that value actually has no effect on on it. So we need to find another way to turn that sprite off. Um, okay, so in which case, enabled the thing is I want this to be efficient as well so <laughs> let's because this needs to happen relatively quickly for this to not glitch halfway through so if you fill the bars from right side to left, you only need to turn off halfway across, not turn off, right? The problem is, is we can't just turn the sprites off. We actually have to change the pointers for the sprites in order that they will show something different. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to load... This is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have a power of two table. I'm just going to call it pop. So, and then I'm going to use this band enable. So I'm still going to use the enabled on off sprite. that gives us that value there and then if I do see, this is gonna be slow and this is the problem uh... am I am I on really quiet my mic seems to be peaking so I don't know I don't know if the stream has suddenly gone quiet or something I think maybe what I need to do here um, I only need to I only need to oh no because I might need to set more than one so it's almost like I need a table of of sprite pointers as well uh, this is a bit frustrating but I, I think this is probably the quickest way to do this um, so for every band, we're going to need a list of, of pointers, um, which is going to be FF for most of the time. I'll do it in blocks of eight so that it, it's nice and neat. <coughs> so this is band one. So this is this one here. Band two. 
So we've got, what, five bands at the moment, like so. So then if I want to turn a sprite off, I do this, like so. Uh, but the last one doesn't count, so I'm, I'm going to set these all to zero, just so it's obvious that they're not being used. See, updating this table is fine, because I can do this in V-blank at the bottom of the screen. That's fine. Uh, the, the the trick is getting it to update very quickly in here. Um, so I'm going to take my band index. Times it by eight. And I'm going to do this with unrolled code, even though I am using an increment. I, I don't want to do a comparison in here as well, so... <clears throat> and it actually gets rid of the index in here as well, so even though this is kind of inefficient... Um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... problem is, is this is going to take up so many cycles that it's not going to be, it's not going to be smooth. That's what's bothering me here. See how it's... It's not ideal. This is too slow, that's the problem. I mean, if I put the band colour after it, maybe that will... Don't need that increment there. Maybe if I do the band colour here. <laughs> no, see, it's... Okay, maybe if I do... Uh, use different Vic banks. Yeah, possibly. That's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, but again... Yeah, I still don't think that's going to work, though. Put the band colour back again. Okay, so <laughs> the problem is, is that this is going to take quite a lot of cycles to carry out. Um, even on rolled like this, we're still having to increment this value here. Uh, The problem is, is I'm using this to cover screen. So th this transition is going to be to cover a level. Um, and so changing the priority is going to just drawing behind the, the level data that I don't, 
I, I want this to be a kind of global transition. So I want to be able to use this anywhere to, to hide screen data, change screen data behind it, um, and then reveal it again. It's a shame that it's a shame you can't just turn the sprite off. No problem, Stoker. Welcome to the stream, dude. This is a tricky one, isn't it? See, this is taking too long. So this is like four, eight, ten cycles. So ten times so seventy cycles. It's more than a line to do this, which is why why we're seeing it kind of offset by. I see. It looks like more than one. Like it looks like two lines of pixels here. I still feel like that colour, changing the colour a bit later would work. Because this looks fine. And just delay the colour by two or something. Right, let's, let's have another play with that. So we do this here. Um, So this is just going to wait for one line, but you see this seemed to change the colour at a very weird point on the screen now, so... Maybe load that first. Stop need that there, and I could probably use Y here. So I can do that here as well. Stroke 64. set the line above it I just want to I want to set some random values for these things so if this was FE and this was FE and this was FE okay that's some kind of random positions so what have we got wrong here yeah. okay Also, let's let's just snap back to um, to power second uh, just to see if it looks different in power. Okay, no, it's about the same, so that's good. That means if we get this working in one, it's probably going to work in the other with a bit of tweaking. So. Um, the colour seems to have be happening too late here. So the colour band should be happening a little bit sooner than that. Uh, here, it, again, it's a little bit too late, but not as late as this one. Here it's happening too late again, yeah. Okay, so the colour, so let's, instead of doing, instead of doing this, Let's do some knobs. Let's just see what happens if we start knocking things around. <laughs> there we go. That looks all right. <clears throat> cool. I believe it was as simple as a few knobs. But we're not quite finished. Because there is always going to be at least one sprite which has its X position changed. And so what we need to do, we need to 
So we've got our band pointers. So this will be there'll be one of these for each band, and then there will be band sprite offsets. And this will be two bytes. Each one will be two bytes. And this will be which sprite number is going to change and what its new position is going to be. So, <clears throat> so if we look at these, so um, it's always going to be the, the last one here, the last FF here. So in this case, it's, it's three. Um, and then its position. So it's going to be whatever its position is here, 9F minus some values so we're gonna we'll just put this to nine zero like that so it's moved back a little bit and we need to do this for every line uh, so on this one it would be the last sprite so this is zero one two three four five sorry not the last one sprite five uh, i'm just going to put this copy down here so i can just see for now uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, FF. So let's move this to uh, E8, let's say. And this is sprite four. And there's going to be some one little glitch in this that I'll need to fix. I know for a fact I'm going to need to do that in a minute. Um, but now I just want to create this this entire table. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this can be five, six, seven. So what we need to do now. Keep the colors there. This is going to change again. I know it because we're going to have to make some changes here. So actually, let's for simplicity double these values. Um, uh, no, I should keep them like that. So, we need to read these band sprite offsets based on this band index again. So, actually, the that's times by eight, but it's, so it's not good. Do want to read it again? Right. Double it. So this is our uh, our sprite offset. So this is our uh, sprite index. X position. It's going to do some weird stuff. Uh, but it's fine, I expect that. Um, now the reason it's doing the weird stuff is because the previous the previous one hasn't been reset so what we need to do 
is we need to store this value And so before we do this, what we need to do is we need to take uh, sprites x defaults x. Actually, I can do it like this. I'm going to transfer it to Y, which gives me this one. We just need to make sure that we reset the previous position, which is now happening. So again, now our, our colors are all over the show. So let's have a look what's happening. So this color has been set too late. Yeah, colors are being set too late now. all about the timing. Once, once the timing's down, this will be fine. So you can see this yellow is being drawn quite a bit too late. So what we might be able to do is actually do this change in the middle of here somewhere. So let's start by doing it back at the beginning again. Let's see what happens. I'm not using Y in here anymore, so I'm gonna change this to Y. And I'm gonna try sticking this in the middle somewhere so uh i'm gonna try putting it here first oh, we're getting all sorts of weird mini glitches going on here as well all right let's put it back at the bottom again Actually, let's run it in the debugger. It's easier to see in the debugger what's going on. You can see it's moved this sprite incorrectly. That's fine. Okay, so it is doing the sprite moves correctly. Everything's been positioned properly. There's no, there's no gaps. Um, other than where we want them to be, which is exactly how it should run. The problem is, is the colours change is happening in the wrong place. So actually, I mean, if we took the colour change out, this would actually be working quite well, but the colour change is quite a big part of, <laughs> big part of what's happening here. So we definitely need that colour change to happen in the right place. Although, look, there's some odd stuff with these here. Like these last positions are wrong. 
so maybe we need to set those before we we set everything else so let's do that um, Okay, so let's move let's move this and do this before we do any of this crap here. And let's let's just put some comments around this as well. So update last visible sprite X position. And this is uh, set pointers sprites to turn last few off see maybe we don't need to do this in this way maybe we can be a bit more intelligent about this and just turn off the ones that have that need changing <clears throat> There is some very odd stuff going on here, like these weird little glitches here. Uh, the effect I'm trying to create is a, a transition. Uh, so we're going to have horizontal bars of different colors coming across the screen to fill the screen. So you can change stuff behind it and then cycle them off again. Um, it's an effect I saw in Mario Golf, and I'm, I'm trying to recreate something similar. Um, I'm not having a good time with it, though. Timing-wise, this is a nightmare, because we're trying to do too much. Like if, I, if I get rid of these, these things here, let me just turn that off. So this is our uh, pointers. Then we're still getting strange... I don't know, actually, the gaps probably look all right, but the color changes are in the wrong place now. But the gaps are kind of okay. Rather than move the sprites, why not change them to thinner ones? Because that would mean having, um, having multiple sprites. And also we're using multicolor double wide as well. So that means the, the most we could move a sprite is four pixels at the most we could transition a bar would be four pixels at a time and while the transition will be kind of quick i want it to be quite smooth so. see everything's fine until i start trying to change this so if i if i don't do this well my timing's wrong now because i need those knobs in place don't i how long is it here So that's fine. The problem is he's moving that last sprite. So if I move that last sprite, it's too slow. It's happening way too quickly. So, oh, sorry, it's happening way too slowly. Um, so can I make this code more efficient? So. If I put this down here after the color update, see what happens if I do it here. Maybe it's just the positioning of the code thing. So you can see it seems to be cutting into um, the next band of color incorrectly uh, and not moving, not moving the next band of sprites quick enough. Um, <clears throat> Do we maybe need to do this in two halves? So maybe I need to do this half first, then the other half. Okay, slightly better. What about if I move this all the way up to the top? So this happens before the pointers. No. What's going on there? It's kind of hard to work out what's going on as well. Uh. 
Yeah, I don't think that's the right place for it. I think this is the right place. It's just a timing thing. Because we're almost there. This colour's happening not quick enough. Just get rid of those knobs again. Just get rid of those. Don't think we need them at the moment. Okay, so let's have a look what's happening. So it's turning off the sprites correctly. So bam, so let's so go through, turn off the sprites. Then on the next row, which is this one here. Can't work out what it's doing at all. I need to change my headphones and stuff. Thank you for the follow, Crocomire. Welcome to the stream, dude. just happening too late that's the problem so okay so let's move this back up to here let's turn the colors off let's just see if they actually look kind of right without the colors because <clears throat> maybe the colors is something we can we can work in easier than let's just, i think what i need to do is make sure see it's not right there's these little so we need to get rid of these first once we get rid of these a small one here a uh, big one here big one here once we get rid of them then we can start thinking about the the colors as well so uh yeah game boy color crocomire so on tuesdays i've been doing uh i've been learning some game boy color code so uh, which is kind of interesting, to say the least. Um, but we're getting there, getting there slowly. Okay, so when do I need to? So this is what's going to reset the previous transition. So this is going to make sure that the previous sprite that was moved gets put back again. So if I do that here. What's the difference? This looks more broken now because it seems to be doing double, double glitches. So I think it's probably better in that second half down there. It is it, this thing that's the problem. This, this is the huge problem here. So if I, if I just turn this off, so this is what's turning our sprites on and off. You can see the gaps are pretty good here. I mean, there's one glitch here, but the gaps are consistent. Consistent gap, consistent gap, consistent gap, consistent gap, and then it kind of breaks a little bit here, but it's a lot better without that, that huge chunk of code running here. Ah. Uh... <laughs> uh, we're all using IRC right now. Twitch's chat is IRC, so. Hmm. Okay. Let's just load that again. Have a look. Let's think about this. So the problem is, is when we want to change the position of the sprite, it's happening too late now, which is why we're seeing this this band where it's drawn in the correct. So this is this is where it's drawn to normally, and then this is where it gets shifted. So this is happening at maybe like one one line too late, um, and this is going to get worse if I. So if I change some of these, so if I change like this, uh, let's do the last one here. Uh, 
So we're literally just using one sprite here. So this would be zero. Uh, and this value could be uh, zero. Stream issues, uh, no drop frames, my internet's on, so everything looks good from this side. Okay, let me just revert that again so I can see. This is the, this is the view I want to fix first. I feel like I feel like just changing changing these values a bit earlier would solve the problem. But when I move this, it seems to make the problem worse. You see, I can't even fathom out what is going on there at all. Um Moving that to the second half doesn't alleviate the problem, again makes it worse. So the closest we've got so far is this version. Got some yellow bars on half the screen. Uh, damn it! Why is this not? Uh, think about this. What is happening? So we come in here. Set these points. Let's get rid of these knobs. I don't think we. Oh, see, no. Timing-wise, we kind of need those. Because now we're seeing... Yeah, that's not going to change things. I definitely need those. This is turning the pointers on for everything at the moment. Turn that off. So, so this is retaining the previous sprite adjustment positions, but you can still see there's a glitch there. So, so we, I mean, we have to have that there. There's no way around that. Uh, using multicolor sprites so that I can change the color of them all. Because part of it is that I need to be able to change the color of these bands as well. So the problem is, is, is when I go to move this sprite, it's already gone way past. It's already gone past uh, where the ones we've enabled or not. So it's already gone past this bit here. Maybe... Maybe it needs to be part of this function. And actually, this should be... Okay, let me try something. Let's call this band offsets. I mean, this is just going to make it slower still, but um, I just want to try something. Just as a temporary test. Okay, so. Oh, actually. Uh, oh shit, yeah, I'm on 2002 followers. Wow. Amazing. 
I was just going to suggest that change. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the first things I thought. Yeah, 800 of them are bots. <laughs> uh, Russian, I think they were. That was a fun stream. Okay, so I'm going to go through these and change these values instead. So, uh, so this would be, so this is going to match these things down here. Just need to do them in the right places. Because it doesn't matter too much how long it takes to work these things out. This, this is something that can be changed. Uh, in the v-blank area in fact before the v-blank once the last bar has been drawn we can start doing this data so <laughs> yeah that's where the that's where the uh all the input should be right band offsets right okay so instead of doing this what I would do instead is just this. I feel like this is going to be super slow, but um, this might give me a chance to actually rein the timings in a little bit. Let's break it up into blocks, so let's see. Because it could even use self-modifying code here, um, which updates these values to save a bit of time uh, in the V-blank. It grabs whatever those values are going to be uh, based on... Oh, no, because this is in the sprite update. It would have to... We would have to set the values at the end of this function for the next one. That's going to get too complicated. I'm not going to do that right now. Self-mod would be a bit kind of... It probably would work, though. That's the annoying thing. Let's just copy. It's easy this way. Right, okay, so I think this should give us the same effect, but hopefully the timings will be a bit tighter. <laughs> it looks worse. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. What is what is that? I'm glad I've kind of prototyped this because I'm starting to think this is not going to work in any easy way. Um, I'm sure a demo coder would just do this in five minutes, but... I feel like this is, this is the way to do it, but it's inefficient. But to be honest, this, this looked better, so... Um, that's just going to look the same, isn't it? Yeah. One thing we can do is we can definitely move that code to here and do the knobs here. So this makes this makes the timing of this a bit easier to control. And let's turn the colours back on because the colours made it easy to spot where the bands were, even though it's going to be slightly out. But. So 
so the colors happening uh, see this is the problem because now Damn. Oh, it's so, it is so close as well. It just comes down to the timing of this thing. This is just too slow. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and have five minutes contemplation with a cigarette. Um, Yeah, all right. I'll be back in five minutes, guys, while I have a think about this. If anybody else has any ideas of how we can make this faster, then um, please let me know. All right, back in a minute. Uh, okay, speed code. Yeah, I mean, this is... It's not really speed code, but it's... I unrolled it rather than make it a loop to avoid some stuff here. Uh, so what we want to be able to do is in the space from the point that we get triggered is somewhere around here this point here to here which isn't many cycles at all to set all these values and that's quite a lot of values to set i mean if we if we just take the pointer things out it's going to look a bit better which is what why just being able to turn the sprites off with dear zero one five would have been much much better So this is gonna yeah see the timing's still off ah good night good night doc <laughs> thank colon <laughs> it really doesn't draw remotes very well good night doc thanks for joining the stream and thank you for the bits I feel like this was closer. Let's just um, let's just undo all that crap that I've just done. Keep those gaps in here so we can see. I think this was closer. Problem is, is the timing of it. It's just still a line too late. It is these that is this that's taking the time because as I said if I just turn this off these are much better that gap is perfect that gap is perfect this is perfect this one's a bit funky I'm not sure why um, but it is definitely these these band pointers that, which are causing the problem. think about this right so we can be updated the next sprite along the screen before it starts drawing 
put the colours back in the game. Colours really help to see what's going on. You can see this colour here is, is happening way too late. Uh, and likewise this is happening way too late. Change the background colour to yellow, I don't know what it is. That's the point though, I want it to be able to go over any background colour, that's the whole point of this. But it's looking like that, it's, it's looking like this is not going to be a feasible thing to do in the game, unfortunately. So I'm kind of glad I've done this tonight. Um, things don't always work out how you want them to, and this is definite proof of that. Um, I'm pretty certain somebody with decent de uh, decent um, decent demo experience could do this in no time. I feel like there's a better way of doing this. This is horrible. Um, the problem with switching Vic banks here is I would need I would still need to set the pointers. But I could do that ahead of time, so I could set the pointers for the next band and then switch the bank. But then I'd also have to have... Well, I just need to switch the screen, right? Ah, actually, yeah. So the problem, the problem is, is what I'm trying to do I'm trying to set the um, maybe I yeah maybe I need to do a cut down version of this. I was hoping that what I could do is set um, I was hoping I could set uh, a sprite halfway through it being drawn, and that's the problem is I can't turn off a sprite once it started being drawn. If I do a D zero one five in the middle of here, it will just draw until it gets to the end, and then it will turn the sprite off. Call all of your band pointers at once, then increment and decrement them accordingly. What? I think we can use the screen stuff. I think we can use the screen stuff. So I think what we need to do is we need to set up two screen buffers. So oh, what am I doing? Actually, it's uh, it's called Sprite Hunters. Um, so let's move our screen up to... Let's put it at 3000. So so the first one will be at 3, 3, at 8. And then um, screen point 2 will be at 3, 7, F8. And then we need a copy of the screen. So I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all the all the screen data into these two locations. Uh, so I'm just going to copy whatever's in the in the base screen. So And this means we are going to have to use the second zero. I just need to check actually that the game has that room. Um, so we might have to do some clever stuff with the, the game to make this work. So I just want to check the memory map for the game. So we do have enemy sprites in that location. Uh, but I might be able to squeeze screen in somewhere. Uh, there's two char sets here. I might be able to do it. I think let's go with this thing. I think if we can get this to work, then it's worth 
it's worth kind of juggling things around a little bit. Can you split the sprite move and the sprite clone different interrupts with a space? What I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to use uh, two banks. So you set the sprites pointers for the next bank to be shown and then you just switch the bank. So that's the aim anyway. Let's, let's see if this actually will work. So I, I want to start by just copying the screen data into these two locations. And then we're going to set up the... <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Hexor. Good <laughs> I keep forgetting I've got text-to-speech turned on. Yeah, we're still chasing the RAS, but we're going to get rid of that entire block of, of dodgy code uh, that takes up loads of time. It means we can kind of... We've got more... Uh, more freedom to, to mess around there. Uh, good night, Hexor. Thanks for joining the stream, dude, and thank you for the bits. Okay, so, it's the value in D018 I need to set, and I need to set the upper four bits of it to be 1100 or 1101. Okay, so... Oh my god. I need to set some kind of limit to that. Thank you for the bits, ladies. Yes. So this is going to be one bank. And this is going to be the other bank. Okay, so hopefully if I run this, we should see the same mess that we had before. Uh, except the sprite points are in the wrong place now, but that's fine. Uh, so we need to set the initial values. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this chunk of code here. Um, and instead, I'm going to move this chunk of code to here. Now I've set up uh, sprite pointers for the next uh, split. I will do this based on the. We do it based on the band index. So if I take the band index and band it with one, if it's equal to zero, we bank one answers, which is this one here. And then bank point two pointers will be here. I don't know what the max <laughs> is, but I think we're going to hit it pretty soon. Good night, Mark. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. 
I do need to get something in place so you guys can actually use these pointers. Uh, use these uh, points for something or other. So if we're on bank, we'll, we'll switch between 3 here, 3-7 three, here, and 3-3 three, three on the bottom. Should probably change these to bank one. And what I made Sprite Pointers one. Sprite Pointers one and Sprite Pointers two. Yeah. So this will be Sprite Pointers two. We'll see. So change this one to the out here. Because what we can do, we can even, um, when it comes to uh, to that that uh, that one kilobyte block that has got enemy sprites in, all the sprites will be turned off. So we could always copy those sprites somewhere else, and then do this transition, and then copy them back again. So I, I think we can definitely so we can make this work by using Vic Bank switch here. Um, then I think we'll be all right. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, bank one and bank two. Uh, so I'm going to put these in a little. Uh, I'm just going to call it this bit of bank tape, uh, and this will be bank one, bank two, like so. And then instead of doing what we were doing before, now what we can do is we can load the bank index and with one bank table comma x. Right, let's see what the hell happens here. Okay, it seems to be doing the right thing now. Um, I think let's just turn those indexes off. Let's just make sure it's actually drawing the right thing first. Oh, good. Now what's happening? I got the tables the wrong way around. Let's see what happens when we go down the street in, in debugger mode. Okay, so our bank is at 3000. Then when we get into this first one here it goes to three four hundred that's correct then it should go back to three thousand then three four hundred so okay so the bank switching is working now and that's allowing us to turn the sprites off at the right times moving down the screen the problem is what's happening um at the end here is if this value if we don't have an even number of these splits then it's going to fail so <laughs> annoyingly i'm just going to put another one in just because it, it fails if i don't have an extra one in here uh, i'm not using band offsets now i don't think no i'm not using that so i'll use this one so I'll just put another one there, band colours, and there. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got six bands. Actually, let's move that into the bottom here. Okay, so an even number of bands is a small compromise to make to make this work, so I think we can live with that. Still not doing the top one correctly though, should be doing this one. Align tables to pages, yeah that will help a little bit, I will do that shortly. <clears throat> For now I just want to get this this working with the new system. But you see this top one here is incorrect. Um, actually it all looks kind of funky as well. I feel like this can definitely work. Okay, so these are the values I definitely need to change. These are just splits, so they're fine. So these are the, these are the values that are going to work today. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, okay. And line-wise, they're dotted between. Let's move this one down to see if this makes any difference. Let's make it the last thing that I'm going to start here. Okay, yeah, so that's down there, that's fine. Uh, I think even just moving the colour here might solve a lot of these issues. <coughs> um, so the first thing to do is why is this bank, why are the sprites in this, this yellow section never being turned off? So are we never hitting this chunk of code here maybe? Oh, yeah, we're not hitting that. So actually, just make that punch of what we call bank two pointers. Hopefully, that's not there. That should be fine. <clears throat> okay, cool. Right. Now, I think if we delay the color a little bit, we might have some success. But we're not entirely complete here because this is set in the bank the next bank up but they, we need to do this as well so let's turn this piece of code on as well <laughs> okay it's looking a lot better we've still got an, a weird sprite end up there it's drawing the gaps correctly Let's, let's turn that off, let's put the colour back in place correctly, so put a few knobs in there. So now, now we've got space for tons of knobs here. Okay, cool, right. So back to where we were originally with these bands working, but now we're not using the sprite adjustment. So let's move the, the sprite adjustment slightly. Which is this bit here. I think I've got some incorrect sprite data somewhere. Hang on. So close, we're so close, we really are. I'm going to put this after that, see if that has an effect. So the colours are happening too late, and so. And now the, oh, it's so close. This is really so close. And what's happening here, I think that's where it should be turned off. So let me just check my tables again. So the first band has the first four sprites turned on and the next Four turned, three turned off. I 
and this is correct three. So this this column here should be the last value with FF in here. So it should be three, five, four, which it is, five, six, four, which it is. Okay, cool. <coughs> Now I need to make sure that these values correctly align to one of the values in this table. So it should be slightly less than the corresponding value in this table. So three is this one, nine F, nine zero, that's fine. Five is FF, so this is E8, that's fine. Four is CFCE, five E1, that's fine. So it needs to be less than this value, but more than the one below it. 0, 06 is this one. 6 yeah. 4 is this one. See, okay, so that table and that table are fine. So let's just check that that's actually been drawn correctly. So I don't care about this now, but that side of things is working. So the Vic Banking has definitely helped there. So <clears throat> the question is now how do we get these? these updates correct so um, if I did so this is the previous one so this is taking the previous the previous sprite position and drawing that let's just run it again actually let's do it in the debugger because we can see exactly what debugger which sprite numbers are being moved and which aren't so going back to our table again so zero, one, two, and three. So you can see three has been moved here, but this one here is incorrect. Am I grabbing the wrong value? I think I am, because I need to be doing the next. So I need to be grabbing this here. Uh, okay, so what I need to do is imprint this. Compare this to our original comparison. No, it's not that one, is it? We're just going to count, make sure we've not gone past the value in that table. So again, this is good because this is in a place where we can uh, we can mess with the, the values. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Okay. We've got time to mess around here, so. much closer now right so the problem is here is that sprite is being put back too soon which is this one here close now so color is being set too soon So it looks like the colours are right, but the new sprite position is incorrect now. Oh, so many things that need to be done. Let's put that back up there again. Just comment out the line of that. <clears throat> Yeah, this 
this is happening too soon there. So we get rid of that. Problem is I can't mess with those values. I can't mess with those values outside of the it has to be done in this this tight timing here. Okay, what about if I move this to here somehow? Oh, damn. Still happening too late. What about if I move this? So this is... Let's move this to here. Get rid of these timings here instead. <laughs> What the hell did I do then? Something went really weird then. So this is doing the banking, that's fine. Let me just see exactly what is going on here. What is wrong? So it looks like <clears throat> it's the position. Yeah. Let's try running it in the debug and then get a enlighten us a little bit. <clears throat> So if we go down to where it first turns. Yeah, it's this sprite here is being shown before it's been moved. So I'm actually going to move this. I really do feel for dead on coders when they're trying out new stuff because this is quite I'm, I'm sure this is a really simple thing for for demo coders but for me it's quite quite uh taxing so i think the bank switch is happening correctly because we're seeing the right things turned on and off this is just a position problem <laughs> the problem being is that the the position hasn't been changed which is this bit wait 
it's not that simple. Can I pre-calculate these? I think I can, can I? So instead of storing the previous index... Store Chimera Boom Sunworks. Right, let, let's... I think I can pre-calculate those as well. Okay, it goes horribly wrong when I do that. I'm not sure why. Pile timing, yeah, it is pile timing at the moment. Uh, I think it should work on MTSC once I get it right. I, I mean, it's so damn close. <clears throat> so let's have a look how we can speed this up. So this speeds this bit up by making sure that these values are set at exactly the same time. So it would be really good if we could also, at this this point, set the new value here as well, instead of having to wait like this. Um, so if we had something like uh, load y, X position, which would be four, so I could get rid of those. And then here, this would be something like, like this, right? This would be X plus one two. Just move this here for now. Problem you can't do everything in a single frame, I delete it. The problem is, is I can't do everything in a single line. It's not even a frame. I'm trying to fit everything into a single raster line. Um, because it needs to be one raster line of uh, of timing kind of variance in order to that these values can be drawn exactly the right time uh, to stop the glitch happening. Uh, it's just going to undo that. I don't think that's quite right. Uh, I think we can do something like that though. So maybe if I could calculate this value ahead of time, so in this section here. Um, Because we've got this increased value here now. Uh, so what do I need to calculate? So I need to know for the next band what was the previous index. So that is, that stays the same. So we'll do that there. That, that stays the same. But then I need to get the next position. So That has to be done. That has to be done a bit further down, so I'm just to be honest, I'm just gonna I don't care if this code down here takes a long time. So I'm just gonna repeat bits of code here. Um, Let's 
right, what I'm trying to do is this chunk here. If I need to get the Y value, so once I've got that band offset, you've got here, double it, transfer it to the Y. Let's get rid of this section here. Transfer it cumulative to Y. Right, now I can store that at is it X plus, okay, X plus mod 2 plus 1. Store this at next X position. Right. means I don't think I need to do that anymore. Let's see if that works. Probably not. Ugh. Yeah, funky, funky stuff. It's to do with this bit here that's wrong. Okay, so we take the band index, we double it, uh, and we get the spider index. That gives us our previous index, which we need. Then we do the increment, we double it, we get the sprite offset. So the next sprite, double it, transfer cumulative star, one, two plus one. Just want to make sure this is not breaking, so I'm just going to put that value in there. Just want to see if it's okay. So there is some other other stuff going on here. I like that random that pixel fade as well, but I'm trying to make something that I can tie the various parts of the ge game together with a single theme. So. Um, and pixelating everything like that is going to be a bit I, I think this is going to look better let's get rid of that just want to see if okay there's some other glitch going on here now I'm not sure what it is but let's just get rid of oh that should not be there anymore. So these bands are almost right. They're flickering, but they're almost right. So what's happening here? This is the this is we definitely need. Let's just turn this off just to make sure everything's working properly without the new new code changes. Okay. That's fine, that's because we are Probably a D001 in here somewhere, but um, oh, that's because that's actually being used all the time. Rotation, that's <laughs> the Rotation is one of those things I've always wanted to, to figure out an easy way to do rotation, but it's it's such a difficult thing to do in any kind of decent way anyway. 
And where might I put that previous? In? Maybe the previous index is pulling enough bar. Ah, ah, there we go. So it's only this value now that's wrong. So when I turn that on, I get weird glitchiness. So take the current band index, yes, store that as our previous. I'm not going to change any of those, see what happens. Okay, fine. So it's to do with this block here now. So we've got it down to the last chunk of code. I definitely need some kind of gamble thing, don't I? Tell you what, if I don't get to sleep tonight, which is very likely as soon as it was 6am this morning when I actually finally fell asleep, um, I, I might code on my laptop till, till I do fall asleep. Yeah, let's turn the positioning off. Let's just see if that. Okay. And let's just load a random value into there. For some reason, the moment that value is non zero, we get issues is this bit here. I feel like it was, we're so goddamn close now. But look, if I, if it's, I set that to zero, I don't know, it's still a problem. Ah, oh, I know what this is. This is now because our, our rasters are too close. So we look at our lines. One of these is too close to the other one. So let's have a look, what's too close? These two are very close. So let's try changing that one. Still something too close. So we need to keep these splits in the same place. So I'm going to move all these other ones to be further apart. Um, these are the ones that take long. So if these take too long, then they hang over into the next one. Whereas these are quite quick. So if I'm going to move move these apart this one doesn't matter this is so 13 there uh, a bit more than that there 12 there 12 there I reckon it's just time at the end there I just need to figure out which one's taking too long it looks like the first one is taking too long right so that's the one that's flickering, which is this one here. Or maybe it is this one. It's definitely to do with the timing there, the split timings. Uh, 
Let's get rid of that line. Let's put it in here. Oop. Let's stick it in here instead. This is... Oh. oh, man, so damn close. Oh, I know why. Oh, because I moved one of these and didn't move this one. Is that right? I think that's right. Uh, I want to check this in the debugger because uh, I think we've got it. I just need to check that the spacing's up. Ah, okay, so there's no sh X shifting at the moment, and that's because. Uh, where was it? Here, I'm just setting it. Fire coded values, let's try that. Oh my god, please work. This would be amazing if this works. Still looks like it's not actually grabbing that value. Let me grab the, the tweet that I did today. Uh, thank you for the follow, Bridge the Chonker. Bridge the Chonker. <laughs> Great name. So this is the effect um, in Mario Golf. It's on an angle, uh, but you can see the background behind it, and then these bars move across and fill the screen. So you try to recreate this kind of similar effect, but we're just going to go completely horizontal. <coughs> so that's the aim anyway um, it's, a ni it's a really nice effect and I think if we can get it working it will really tie the game together quite well um, let's see if I can I don't have a lot of luck with, uh, with running videos at the moment let's give it a try thing is it's it's such a quick effect as well i hope people appreciate their work that has gone into making this work uh how's if i spell golf correctly i guess Let's see if it's a better trailer actually is there a review review there we go So let's put in Cinema Nerd. Of course, that's not going to load, is it? Oh, this is World Tour. This is not the same game. Ah, oh, maybe it is. 3DS. Alright, maybe it is the right thing. Doesn't look the same now for some reason. Let's see if the transition looks the same again. And I don't think it's the same. Oh yeah. Oh, in fact, it does it horizontally there as well. I don't know if you saw that. It's not very smooth. I wish I could make it smoother. Let me try pausing. Let me try pausing. Seems to to stop as soon as it goes. Yeah, the, the and this is the key. This is why, this is why it needs to be done this way. So, I'm trying to create a way of giving myself control over it. So I've got these tables. Uh, here that allow me to change the colours and the bars and stuff so I can move things at different uh, different speeds. 
that's the aim anyway, and I think we're really close, but for some reason it's not grabbing uh, the final value, which is this one here. Or horizontal position, it doesn't seem to be affecting it for some reason. But saying that, everything else looks spot on here. Um, so if I if I if I do put a different value in here, like if I, hopefully we should see some kind of weird sprite behaviours. It's been very slow, but it's not actually storing those values either, which is a bit annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a breakpoint and then load it in the debugger because I want to know exactly what's going on here. Something's really slowing this computer down at the moment. I don't know what it is. I think I need to do. I think I need to check my drivers or something because it shouldn't be this slow. I've got loads of debugger windows open, but shouldn't be that slow at all. The debugger's crashed on me. God damn you! So that value is D001 there. And in fact, it never changes. Oh, and that's the Y value. It's not the Y you want to change, is it? Oh, actually, it shouldn't matter. It should be being updated by... Uh, by this value here. Oops. Oh, now I'm hitting the break point. Getting the break point. No! Why? Why has that changed now? Okay, break point again. I want to see what value. I think it's just putting the wrong values in there now. In the debugger, though. So D00, D020, D08, yeah, it's, it's put all sorts of weird values in there now. Ah, and I think that's because it's not grabbing... Find sprite offsets, plus zero, comma, X. What's that? Always moving this sprite now, weirdly. Okay, put the right point in. We're so close, really are so close. Yeah, it's a D zero one zero to a. For some reason it keeps moving this right here, so it's moving this one over here, look. And see as, as I go, but it's also setting this one here incorrectly. Oh, because this should be being set before we go into here. So, actually, I need to set this to just a, a dummy value for now. Then when I set this here, I'm also going to do... Because it has to actually run once before we can set that value, so...
Thanks, DMX. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. Hopefully this is going to work. Boom, there we go. Stable. Hopefully. Let's see if I can move this halfway across this one. So if I move this top bar four across, they should cover it. And to do that, I just need to go in here and move this four across like that. Boom, there we go. So we've got nice, smooth access to that now. So what that means now is I can use the rest of the time here and here, updating the values for this table. I will test NTSC in a second. I just want to tighten the, uh, the sprite timing at the top here. So I'm going to change this to 2A and just see if that still works. It does. Cool. Right. So that gives me all the time from here to somewhere around here to set these tables. Right, let's try NTSC mode. Uh, machine. Oh my god, I'm scared to see what happens now. some slight timing with the colour here uh, but that can be fixed with a few knobs up here so I think so what we what we've managed to do is move all of the processing into uh, into this section down here so it doesn't happen um, straight away and what we're actually doing is we're we're just setting three values um, using self mod to modify which values get changed because we need to set a previous position, a next position, and a color. We're using Vic Banks to actually switch the pointers out, and then we just set all the values up and not. And in fact, this could probably be done as well down at the bottom, uh, but it really doesn't matter. I think three knobs here would probably make this work in NTSC. That's looking pretty spot on. Uh, just double check that in PAL again. Okay, so only one less knot, maybe. Yeah, that looks good. Check in NTSC again. say so I still think there's a little bit of uh, I, I think this can be moved as well into the into this section down here um, to, to further tighten the timings and give us yeah this looks good okay cool um, I'm gonna go for a quick smoke and I haven't got work in the morning so when I come back I'm gonna do another hour um, and I'm gonna make these bars move um because that will kind of be the proof that this is this is working so we'll use we'll use the last hour to actually animate these i mean i'm i'm quite pleased it's taken what three hours to do um but actually there's some pretty tricky stuff going on in here so i'm quite pleased with it so i i want to see if we can get these bars to kind of move across the screen uh, so i'm gonna have a quick think about how i'm gonna do that while i have a smoke uh and then we'll we'll give it a shot All right back in a sec no, i'm back <laughs> have you broken the gambling machine okay So let's start by just doing one bar. Let's just make one bar kind of move move across the screen. And we know when we do this, 
section here. I can... Slow down to zero, I get there. Right. So animate the bar, so what do we need to do? I'm going to put this in a weird place and put it here. Just because I can see the data. Move it, move it out when I'm done. So basically, based on these values here, we need to set these tables. And I've just thought of one little problem that we're going to have. In that the... If the position is less than 20, if the band position is less than 24, we're not going to be able to see that double width sprite, so we might have to do some trickery to make that work. So let's start with, let's start with a position of, uh, let's start with a position of this and we'll move, oh, we'll, we'll work out the lower one later. It's not too much of a problem if there's a band of sprites down that side. So it's just playing music from a. It's just playing sound effects now. Skip to the next track. Okay, so let's just do one band, um, which is just changing these values. Oops. These values here and these values here. So how do we do this? Okay, so our bands start at these positions. So what I need to know is going to cycle through. Set Y. So Y is going to be our table to table index so we're going to compare that value if it is less than if it's less than that value Actually, if I just do... Harry is already going to be set at that point, so if I just do this... Like so, right. And then...
And then... this sprite offset. <clears throat> yeah, it's broken, isn't it? I don't know what you guys have done. Streamlabs has gone mental now. Do this the other way around. And then I can store Exo Sprite offset. And then that means I can grab Sprite offset. Store that out. Um, Sprite offsets. I think that do it. Let's just see if that actually adjusts. Ooh, okay, no, that did something weird. Make bars. Okay, let me just make sure this isn't broken completely by getting rid of that there. Oh, no, on the right. It's because I did a push and didn't pull. I don't think I needed to do the push anymore. Oh, no, I do need to do the push. I need to do the pull here, though. Okay, that should be set in the band here. Okay, let's see if just changing that value directly will have an effect. So let's, let's put a, a marker in here. Maybe it's just not updated correctly. Okay, so our band pointers are at 08FB. Actually, let's align. For simplicity. Has it got some kind of time like spam limit on it or something? Time points are 0900, okay. So if I go to 0900 in here. Okay, so it's, it's not actually setting these values, but if I, if I go in and do this manually, see, I can't actually turn those off. Let's change my phone. I don't know if that's worked. I'm just going to trigger another alert again. That's it. If I set this to zero, zero, okay, so it's, it's not working because these values are not being updated, but then these it doesn't look like these are being updated, but these because I can turn these on, like so. It's freaking cool that I can do that though, that's nice. Keep smooth, which is good. This is this is nice. I like this. I'm so happy this is the first one.
I think I need to put a break point in there. I think I need to see what's going on in that routine. Um, because it's not making much sense what's actually looking at the other side. So stick a break point in here in the, in the debugger and see what happens. So we have this value here, which is what I want to update. Um, and what it should be doing is it should be looking at this list and saying, okay, um, is it, oh, actually, no, I think it's slightly wrong, but I, let's just go through because I think there's something different going on here that's wrong. So what I'm interested in is this chunk here. Um, so it's the carry set. So it should be comparing to the table by right, AD, wherever it is here, um, to see if it's less than these values. Uh, 3F, 6F, it's... C4, yeah, there we go. Oh, but it's always setting six, it's always getting to the end, it's always rubbing those, so... The accumulator is 1A, it should be comparing to 08 AD, X. X is 5. Four, five. Let's go through. So x is zero again. Okay, so x is zero. It should be comparing this bit here. We go. Should be comparing one eight to zero f, which means it's going to be. Oops. Okay, so if it's less than, maybe I've got the, I think I've just got the flag the wrong way around, that's all. <laughs> so I think that should be this. That's uh, my break, there it is. Um... Okay, it's interesting. What? Okay, it's in the debugger again. Uh, okay, so it's got these the wrong way round now. So that one should be FF and everything else should be FE. So that should be, it's not like changing there because it's updated every frame. Oh, it's not. Okay. Because that should be here, like so. No, 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 that's not right. Oh, because I'm not incrementing the band point either. Uh, it should be that one. There we go. Oh, 
Well, that's a bit annoying. It's a bit of a gap there. Okay, I'm going to run this in pal mode. Okay, it's a pal NTSC thing, but okay, I can figure that out later. Let's just get this working. Okay, so hopefully now, if I go and change the values in our table, so I shouldn't need to do the table now, I should just be able to do uh, bank positions here. So if I go to 0900 uh, and just have a look. Oh, hang on. Find the colours. So this value here, so if I change this value Okay, why is it only drawing half a sprite there? It seems to have I know it's getting things wrong, but so it should be like that or something. That should be off. So annoyingly, it's fine at that point. Oh, it's because. Hang on a second. No. Okay, I think I need to think about this a little bit different. Oh, this is this should be the easy bit. But for some reason it's it's shifted all of these sprites over. I think there's something fundamentally wrong with that. Let me let me turn that animation off and do it manually. So uh, I should be able to very easily go and change the length of any of these bars by changing these values. So if I change this down, I turn in sprites off, and then if I set this to Again, the previous it's like it's getting the previous one wrong for some reason. Do I have to set them all? That can't be right. Hang on. Why is it getting these ones wrong? That's the thing. really weird it's like it doesn't like me changing those values on the fly he gets confused probably because I'm changing them midway through so the previous value is kind of screwed up but I would have thought it would have corrected itself which is a bit frustrating also, I'm seeing a tiny glitch here as well. Uh, but I mean, that's so small, I think when it's moving, you're not going to notice it. The fact that it's smooth at this end is the important thing. So 
So if I was to change this to like eight or something, and then FE on that one. But for some, for some reason, the next row screws up until I pass it through like that. Let's try changing this row as well. So this would be uh, zero one. Yeah, that's really weird why it does that. Also, annoyingly, I can't, I can't shift this this sprite any further that way. So I would have to turn off. I would either have to start in this position. Maybe not a bad thing, because um, you could have them fade in and then move across. Um, or I would have to turn sprite expand off for this just this one sprite. which probably means we'd need eight sprites. So I'm going to put a rake point in. Can I do... I think I can do raster break points, can't I? I do... Right, that. There we go. So the code is broken at that point. So if I then change the position of this to... This code isn't running, so I don't know why it's suddenly doing that. Though it looks like it's running, look. It says it's paused here. Oh no, it was, wasn't. It was running. Okay, I'm going to try just setting some hard-coded values in this function to see if it actually updates and doesn't break the rest of the table because it does seem to be doing some odd stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set... Um, I'm going to copy this one here so store this uh, uh, brand sprite offsets zero now I'm just gonna call so this is just a, a debug thing just to make sure this works So we're gonna load band pointers plus eight sixteen twenty four. So if this works, then I know it's just the method that I had that was doing something incorrectly. That looks fine. Okay, so as long as I update it in the right place, it's fine. Um, so let's try let's try going the other way and um, can create some dummy data here. The new pointers call it. So and 
gonna make this Yeah, this is this is fine. The the timing is a little bit off here, but I, I can worry about that later. Uh, it might not even look that bad once it's moving. So um, my my main concern is that this side looks nice and smooth. Um, but I can set those values to whatever I want in here. So I should be able to if I just move uh, this I should be able to move it ever so slightly over to its half cover and a value. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so it's my routine that's actually that's doing the wrong thing here. So what do I need to do? I need to grab a value. So let's just comment this out for that. I'll leave it there as a test. Um, so given a position, I need to work out which sprites need to be turned on and which sprite needs to be moved. Um, so I could be really cheap here and just make a big 256 byte table which contains, given a position, contains which sprite should be turned on. I think I'm going to do this in half, half bytes, so like that. Uh, the reason being is so I don't have to deal with the MSB. So it's only going to give us two pixels per position, but it's still better than doing it with four. So. Attached to Sam, welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, and High Fist Master as well. So, given that these are half positions, maybe I can actually create a, a position sprite lookup. Uh, and then this table would basically be which sprites to enable at what point. Uh, so given this is our sprite list here. So this would be however many um, with sprite zero. How many is it going to be? So if the sprite position is so our sprite is at F, the next sprite is at 3F. So if if the position is less than 3F, or up to 3F, should I say? No. Hang on, think about this. Right, so let's, let's pick a number somewhere in the middle. So then let's ignore the halves for now. So let's say we have a position of 80 we would need these three sprites to be on and this would these four to be off and then this one adjusted so that its position was 80 minus uh, 48 so its position would move to 50 right so, given a sprite position that's in halves, well, let's do, well, actually, let's do full. So, the sprite we're looking at in this case is the one less than that. So, so in this case, all sprites up to three reduce sprite zero, this one here. And then all sprites up to 60, which is another 30, G sprite one, and this would continue all the way down. Two, four, five, six, like that. Then we need to half these for half positions in here. So we need to use a half position. So this becomes uh it's half three. Uh, that's one F, and then this is one eight. Okay. 
get rid of that crap. I don't think we need that like that anymore. Uh, most of this anyway. Okay. Window causing issues. So, given a bank position, which I load into X, then load position sprite lookup, comma X, store this at bank sprite offsets. plus zero for now we're just doing the first line and then to transfer the X to the accumulator we need to double it because we're using half values and then we need to subtract 30 from it might cause an issue at this location we might need to adjust this table ever so slightly that might be a two zero like that uh, but and then that goes to here okay so that's set our sprite position up let's give that a yeah that we can try that out um See what's going on. Is that a request? It is supremacy. All right, let's do that. Good choice, by the way. Okay, so let's just go back to our chunk of cut rope that one place in that place there. Wait, well, that doesn't look right at all. Oh, because they've moved now to 08 and there we go. Okay, I mean, it's moving the wrong things across the screen. Um, it is, it is actually moving things, which is good. And this is just doing this because of the weird problem with trying to update things halfway through. Where's my... let's move the window open. Okay, so that's So the other thing we need to do then is... Oops. To load I'm 
store, actually store that in the sprite offset here, so we do have that variable set up for it. That's not the system, so use it here instead. Parrots with sprite offset. And if X, which is uh, so this is getting confusing. I know this is probably making no sense to most of you right now because it's barely making any sense to me. Show sure up nebulous. I think maybe it's turning one too many off. Oh, I know why. Uh, let's actually need to include that here. Because the comparison is more than or equal to, not just more than. Okay, it seems like it's done the opposite of what I wanted to do. Diagonal raster bars, probably done with uh, band switching and stuff. So, like the tech tech stuff we were doing last week, you could do the same with raster bars as well. That would be my guess, anyway. It was it. Um... Oh, I don't know what's it called. No, I think I know. I think I know the demo. Just it's enabling the wrong sprite here or something. Well, that's oh shit, I should have left it as it was. Really, Supremacy doesn't have in game music. That's disappointing. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't have room to do that. Uh, okay, yeah, this value is completely wrong, so this would be like that. What well, should be like that, but... Okay. Okay, so we need to subtract 30 from it, but if the carry flag has been cleared then we need to put zero in there I think and that's what it is that's better right okay so with that in mind hopefully should just be able to do this But if I set that band position to somewhere in the middle, it's probably just going to work fine. One, yeah, two, sure why. Ah, oh, thanks, Hayes. 
<laughs> Thanks for the bits, dude. Oh, I think I'm getting close to the end, to be honest. It is very, very close. Um, I might do a little bit of this on Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I definitely want to use this transition because I think it will be pretty awesome if I can get it working. Uh, problem is, is getting it working doesn't seem to be what it wants to do right now. Um, rather annoyingly, I think being clever and trying to do the stuff ahead of time means it breaks when you when you actually do this this animation at this point here. Um, so I mean, I wonder what would happen if I changed these values to be like this. It did it in the middle line instead, and maybe it would probably be all right. Is the music stopped? Sounds like the music stopped. Let's come back to supremacy again. Let's pick a random thing up. No problem, Buzz Link. Good night. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. Uh, so I should be able to just update this value and it change on the fly, but it's because every because each line is dependent on the previous one. It's having some issues. It's not quite sure how to how to update that line, annoyingly. And then it seems to break further lines down the screen. Yeah, see this is the problem, that that should not be. So this is the one that we're changing. And it's it's kind of going wrong here. It's getting all the wrong values. And the previous sprite that it's trying to put back is is basically causing all these weird glitches down here. Because these should all be showing, but they're not. See, nothing has turned those sprites off. But I think the fact that this is moving across the screen is kind of is breaking some of. Yeah, I think I think the uh, I think this routine is just wrong. I need to probably sleep on it and and have a think about it. But we're we're so close, really are so close. Um, I, I think it would be a shame not to use this because I know it can be done now, and it, it is. I think when it works, it will be a, a nice. Nice effect. I mean, I know it's going to last for a split second, but I think it's going to add to the kind of feel of the game and really tie everything together. Uh, and for me, that's that's the most important thing is that the game flows nicely from one one section to the next. Um, this, yeah, I, I think this is probably wrong. Yeah, I think this is one of the problems. Um, so I, I'm actually going to start by, let's have a look at this, so if I take the position, okay, so I'm getting the correct sprite. It's that the problem is, is the next line doesn't seem to be grabbing the right index. It's like, maybe what I should be doing in here is instead of getting the previous index is just to have a look what the previous index should be what was the last thing that got changed instead of trying to record it down here and then use it on the next line just have a look what what was just changed back there uh, in which case i can just grab it from from somewhere so i i, I think there's i think there's a little bit of work i'm i am going to call it here um it's fairly close. You can see from the 
you can see if I don't increment that value, it draws correctly. Uh, there's a bit of a glitch here, but I, like I said, I don't see that being a massive problem. Um, it's just a matter of animating these bars now. Um, it's taken a bit longer than, than I thought, to be honest, but... Um... I think it's a combination of when I do the previous sprite, like resetting the previous sprite. So this one has been drawn slightly back here. So when I go to this line, I need to set it to its new location uh, properly. Um, I think I, instead of storing that value and then looking it up, I think I just need to go and have a look and, and see which one got, uh, what the previous line says should have been changed. Um, and then the animation hopefully should work properly then. And then it's just working out how to do these uh, values correctly um, all the way across. Maybe use zero page value to hold the location. Yeah. Yeah, I think as well, I'm going to um, try and optimize this a little bit. I think what I might do is I I'm not going to do this on Saturday. I'm going to continue with the power up stuff on Saturday. Uh, and then what I might do is um, either continue this next Thursday um, or do a little bit, a little bit of kind of more proof of concept in, in the off time. Once this works, this is going to be really easy to get into the game because it's it can almost be a standalone thing. I can almost import it as a as a library just for doing this transition, um, and then it's just a matter of kind of positioning things properly. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased we've got the timings good enough. I mean, like, there is a little glitch here. Uh, again, I'm not, not entirely sure why that's happening. Um, but it's it's minor, and I think this this can... It might even just be a bug with the way that the, the previous sprite is drawn. Um, yeah, I think it's probably something to do with that. And there's probably things I can do, like, at the moment we're using six bands. If I make it eight bands, it's a nice power of two. There might be some speed improvements I can grab from that um, to do with kind of looping the index value and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I I think I'm gonna call it there, guys. Uh, shame we didn't finish it, but this is what happens when you uh, when you try and do something without really thinking about it too much. Uh, is anybody streaming Commodore? So, anybody got anybody want me to raid? Oh, what's Hitch playing? I bet Hitch doesn't play Commodore anymore though. No, see, what's that? That's not Commodore. God damn you, Hitch. What's me being playing? Don't know what that is. Search for Commodore. Buffalo Pinball. All right, let's let's raid a buffalo. Let's raid a raid a buffalo. Let's uh, check out some pinball. Because Commodore doesn't seem to be happening anywhere. All right, let's. Too many C sixty four streamers for Hitch. It's a shame he should he should do more. I like I like watching Hitch play C C T four. He just doesn't do enough, unfortunately. Alright, let's raid Buffalo Pinball then. Um cool. Oh. Right, on that note guys, thank you very much for coming along. Sorry we didn't complete it, but it's been an interesting journey. We've discovered some cool stuff about what we can and can't do with these sprites, so it's all, it's all good. Let's turn the music off. And I'll see you guys uh, Saturday. Yep. Yeah. Alright, take care guys. Bye.
pinball extravaganza finale. Because everybody loves this song, uh, I'll do this song for challenges. 